We have three weeks to prepare our boat for our biggest sail yet. It's gonna be 2300 nautical miles crossing from Brazil to the Caribbean. So, let's get started! I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And after two years bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. So, don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. Back to our real life, let's work! This is a project that I've been waiting for literally almost a year to do. Mm -hmm. We got all the parts, and like we got something that was like, oh, we have everything. No, there's something missing, and then there's something missing, <laughs> and then there's a wrong part. So now we finally have everything we need to install our spinnaker pole in place. I think. The first step is gonna be to install this track. I think that's gonna be a really cool project. So the idea is to install this track somewhere around here. Just need to measure the height of the clue of the sail and then we're going to install because we have two head sails and we need to have like two different heights Positions. so that's why we have the track so we can move the track around whenever we need to change the sail. Mm. Yeah, by the way, we wish we could leave the spinner capo on the mess but it's not possible because of this babe stay. There is no space to leave the spinner capo here. So, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. At least this track is going to be just so good. <laughs> That's it, one out of 34. That's gonna be boring for you guys to see me doing that like another 33 times. But now at least we have the center one. We can put the track in place and we can try to see how high we want the track. That's actually pretty good. Now we need to make a decision. Come here. Uh -huh. oh, there's always a decision. Yeah, the thing about refitting or building a boat is basically, I think we talked about that for two years, is decision making every single day of the year. So this is an end stop. So we're gonna put the end stop somewhere around here. And then we also need to have a block because in order to put the car up and down there is a line that's gonna come from here. So a line from here and a line from here and we need a block on the top so we can pull this car up and we can put the car down and we need to have a line on a cleat just like this one here and a cleat on the other side because we need to pull it up and down, we need to have two lines. We need to decide how much space we need here. I think that's pretty close to what we need but now we're gonna take slow today and we're gonna think properly, otherwise we're gonna do twice the same job. So I guess we'll see you tomorrow. See you! Let's check it out what Duke is doing. He's working on the mast, so let's check it out how the work is going. How it's going? Pretty good! The tricky part of doing this is align because the hole needs to be aligned on both X and Y direction so it needs to be straight this way and also this way otherwise the screw is not gonna be flush with the track that's a little bit tricky but so far I'm doing good Here we go again. Actually, Duca goes again. It, this is the third or fourth day? I think it's the third day of the project. <laughs> you know, taking it slow is just so hot outside here that I all either work in the morning or after the sun is a little bit down. You're done, that's so good. I mean, you're never done. So now all we need to do is to install one block here because we need to have the line to control the height of the car. So we need one block here that we don't have yet, soon, and one cleat on the bottom and we are good to go. And then we just need to install all the fittings of the spinnaker pole itself. 
but that's going to be really soon. I mean, we have a timeline. We need to leave to the Caribbean and we need to have the spinnaker pole to the Caribbean. It's going to be downwind all the way, so we do need this ready. But I'm proud. We are getting really, really close. Are you proud? Yeah, proud? totally proud. You! But now it's too dark. Let's go for a barbecue and tomorrow we keep working. Day five, I guess. So now I need to take one by one the boats and I need to apply Loctite to the thread so it won't get loose with time. And now also apply some Tef gel to the head because the aluminium in contact with the stainless steel is going to be trouble in the future. So, you know, just to make sure, it's going to take a little while. Let's do one, we film one and then we skip the whole rest because <laughs> you're going to get tired of me doing that. The first one out of 30 something is ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna skip that. I need to get my harnesses. I need to go up the mess. I need to hang myself in two different positions and go up and down, up and down. So we see you when this is ready. So now that the track is 100% in place, Yay! all sealed, <laughs> all with the necessary products, all good. <laughs> I didn't lose anything for the water yet. Every single time I work on the mess, I lose some for the, the water, not yet. So now it's the trickiest part. This one I cannot lose. <laughs> That's the most important and beautiful part. That's the card. And in order to transfer the card without losing all the little balls inside, I need to go to the top, I need to sit on this little seat, and I need to unscrew the ending, <laughs> put this track in front of the other, and just slide and hope <laughs> I don't lose anything. So, one of the things that we consider important in a long passage is to know how to handle situations that you have problems like health problems or if you have a accident. Accident. an accident, yeah. how to react. Basically, we're not doctors, but in a crossing, there is no doctor, so you need kind of to become a doctor. So, in order to do that, what are you going to do today? We are gonna have a meeting with a friend that's a doctor. It's like a first aid course, yeah. crash course. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing that a lot of people forget to think about. When you go on a crossing, there's so many things you need to get ready for. And that's a really, really important one. So I think we're kind of late for class. Yeah. Need to, yes. It's an online class. Class she, is starting right now. <laughs> yeah, she's back at our hometown. So we're gonna do online classes today. Of course, a quick course won't make you a doctor, but for sure we feel a lot more prepared now that we went through so many different scenarios and what we should do and what medicine we should have aboard. Of course, this is like a boat insurance. It's something that you have, but you hope you never need to use. So, if you speak Portuguese and you need some support understanding first aid issues, feel free to contact Fabi. We are gonna leave her contacts in the description below. Yeah. So the next job on this project is to finally install the tips of the spinnaker pole and let's hope this goes smoothly. Spinnaker pole already in place, as you can tell. We do have this line that's the top lifting, but we don't have the line that goes from here to there. So we need to buy a line to install here in order to install the top lifting on the center. And also we don't have the control lines on the bottom. I want to have one towards the bow and one towards the stern of the boat so we can, you know, put the spinnaker pole wherever we want and stick on the same place, not move around. And also we need to install the control lines for the card because we need to be able to put this up and down easily. Other thing that's really important on a crossing is provisioning. So today we are starting the provisioning system, but just the beginning for sure we are gonna have way more things to buy. Let's check what I bought. That's all we have for today, 17 boxes. So let's start unboxing. Luca doesn't know what I bought, so I bought 
Brazilian drink for the Ecuador passage. I'm gonna hide this before he gets here back from taking the card back. It's gonna be a secret. Don't tell him. He came back before expected. Now he knows our secret. I know the secret. That's awesome. Was that for the so, middle of the crossing? This so is for the equator. Oh, <laughs> so I need to save you until the equator? But it was supposed to be a secret. That would be awesome, actually. Oh, the babe! Part. I need to think about something else. I guess we have a lot of food now, yeah? That's all we have for now. We decided instead of doing a, one provisioning, we're gonna do a few different ones to make it easier for us to see how much space we have and, you know, to. We'll see. This is the first one. And some stuff is not here yet, like uh, canned tomatoes not here yet. Condensed milk, I think we need a lot more condensed milk. <laughs> I, I need condensed milk. We have a lot of other things that we need, but this is already something. I bought this online and... <laughs> Thanks. The thing is, I bought all these online and some products they didn't have, so I need to buy in another place. Yeah, that's the tricky thing about provisioning where you have no car. And nowadays, it's much easier it. with online delivery. Oh, yeah. yeah, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, yeah I mean, now like, I just need, need to, to organize the whole thing. All these and take all the labels <laughs> out because of cockroaches. And take a while. put names and trying to find space for right. all these. So now we have the old cans, some of the old and the new cans. We need to do a spreadsheet on Excel in order to organize this mess and know exactly what we have. Otherwise, it's hard to control, right? First of them, corn. How corn is the most important one. <laughs> How many corns do we have? Forty-three. 43 cans of corn. That's happiness. Pure <laughs> happiness. We have food already. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Today is one of those days that you need to say goodbye. Yeah, some friends that we met here on the Yacht Club, they're gonna say you straight from Recife, the place we are, from the Yacht Club, all the way to South Africa because they're gonna do the Cape South Town Hill. Yeah, Cape Town Hill, Rio, that's a race next year. And they're gonna do just one straight trip from here to South Africa. Check this out. It's a 51 foot out trimmer. So our friends made this 3600 nautical miles trip in 18 days going from the northeast of Brazil to Cape Town in Africa. They participated in the famous offshore race called Cape to Hill. As the name says, it's a race that goes from Cape Town in South Africa to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. They not only participated in the race, but they finished in the second place. We are so proud of them. We hope to cross paths again soon. Another day, another project. We said before that our freezer is not working, so we bought another fan. As we think, the fan is the problem. I also managed to take this cover out. I think I found the solution to take this fan off. Yay! And this is out. <laughs> First step then. Now we just need to check if this is the problem, because it might not even be the problem. So it's time for the truth. Uh, I connect a long wire to this old fan and I'm gonna put directly to the battery and see if this is gonna spin. If this spins, that means that's not the problem. It's the first time that I want something not to work. Babe, bad news. So that's not the problem. The fan is not the problem. So now, if the fan is not the problem, maybe the brain of the freezer might be the problem. See ya! Yeah, so according to Fred... This is Fred. He lived with us for over six months during the pandemic. And for sure, so much of what we know about electrics, plumbing, mechanics and other boat systems we learned from him. We actually call him the Guru Fred. We need to check if there is energy on the wires because maybe the fan is working but the wires are not energized. So I'm gonna try to turn on the freezer and as soon as the compressor kicks in... Compressor is on. We need to see 12 volts on the wire. No. So there is no energy arriving on the cooler. The cooler is not the problem, but the wire for the cooler might be the problem. You take out this little box to check where the wire goes because it comes from here and goes inside this box and then I have no idea where, where it goes to. It's only I'm taking apart this entire freezer. <laughs> By then I guess I'm gonna be a professional freezer <laughs> specialist. So there's another motherboard there. I have oh, wow. no idea what to do with that, but there's a motherboard. Now we need to follow the wire. And I see already the wire, and let's see if maybe the, this little board, the secret circuit board, might not be working properly. It's getting complicated, out of control. Friend, where is you? Another test. Yeah, the next test on the troubleshoot is to uh, test the continuity 
of the wire coming from this motherboard to the end of the wire. What does that mean? So we do have continuity, that means the energy, if there is energy there, is getting to the wire. So we need to go back a little bit more and now try to understand where the energy comes to this circuit board. And oh man. So now we need to do a pretty tricky test. We're gonna turn on the freezer and I'm gonna test the voltage on the circuit board and that's really tricky because the space is really tiny and if I do a mistake, that means I burn the motherboard. So after so many calls with Fred, we came to the conclusion that something is wrong with this uh, circuit board. What we're going to do is to disconnect the fan inside from here and connect it straight to the outside one. So that means when this fan starts, the inside is going to start. When this shuts off, the inside is going to shut off. The only thing that's gonna, not going to work is when I open the door, the fan is still going to work why why it used to be like when i open the door the fan shuts off but for now that's all we can do because we cannot find this circuit board in brazil so let's try at least i'm learning a lot thanks a lot fred you are awesome by the way so supposedly everything's connected now we need to start the freezer and hope for the best yes we have a fan working this one yes. also yes <laughs> but I need to organize the whole thing and then we're gonna leave it on and see what happens. Hopefully we've did it because a crossing, like an 18 days crossing without a freezer is gonna be way worse. If we have a freezer that means we have, you know, good food. It's gonna be awesome. Thanks, Dave. For all the trouble. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, someone's pressuring me for like the last one month to get this done. Eventually I do it. I just, I need to take my time. Sometimes it takes a long time. Yes. <laughs> it's true, but I get it done. <laughs> so the next step we need to buy some lines and in order to buy lines we need to know how much of the lines we need what's the length of each you know line we need and for the spinnaker pole we need to put the spinnaker pole in place in order to see that So one more line that we really need, we need to have a preventer for the boom and the way to do that properly is to have a line coming from where the blocks are attached, that means right here. And this line needs to go all the way to the bow of the boat and then come back so I can control from the cockpit. So now we're going to put the boom out just to measure this line. So from here we can have a line with a low friction ring and from the low friction ring we can take all the way to the cockpit, that's the idea. Today I'm going to do a kind of job that I really wish I didn't need to do that. I've been trying to, you know, pretend I don't need to do that for a long time, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I don't know if you remember where we pass the wires. This basically is where we pass the wires from inside the boat to the outside part of the boat. We have two more wires coming for the Iridium Go antenna and they're really thick and there is no possibility of running through here because there's way too many wires. So we build a new one and for that I need to create this big of a hole on the hole of the boat. I'm gonna get this little plastic cup. I'm gonna tape to the bottom so nothing goes anywhere on the bottom and on the top I'm gonna try to work with this but before we start doing that we need to have the paint in hand because as soon as we, we create the hole we need to paint otherwise we're gonna have humidity and with humidity we have rust so we need to open up this locker and see if we can find our paint otherwise we cannot create a hole without a paint
after two hours. Yeah, so now, as you can tell, of course, it's not clean the hole. And the reason for that is because I don't have the proper size drill for this big pipe. It's enough. With this, I'm gonna do a better surface and I want to be a little bit with a uh, slack because I want to properly paint. And when I properly paint, when there is no slack, it's gonna crack the paint later. So I'm gonna I do know. like with some slack this time to make it easier. It doesn't need to be a pretty hole because it's gonna be covered by this. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna do a quick update while Duca is... Well, from time to time we do a quick update for patrons to show how the boat is, to show where we are and to talk about future plans. So this image was a video we sent to patrons four months ago. On this link on the top right corner on the screen, for example, is a live video talking about our future plans that we posted this week. I think that's it. And talking about Patreon, Ron, welcome to our Patreon family. Anything? Thanks so much for the super thanks. So this is the thickness of our deck. Mm. It's pretty thick for the deck. So now I just need to do the holes in order to bolt the piece in place. The cigarette funny. De la veille me laisse sans voix et mes jeunes années. What a beautiful morning to start doing some really tough work. <laughs> I've been waiting for like two days already because I really don't want to start this, but at some point we need to do it. You know, at, at this point you already know me, I postpone things a lot. <laughs> so basically I need to run this huge cable from the stern to the NF station. Yeah, so basically in order to do that we created this, as you know already, but I didn't put it in place. And the reason for that is because I think it's going to be easier to run this wire through here before installing if the deck's right here the turn is really sharp so it's going to be a sharp turn and a sharp turn so I, I think it's going to be easier to do this way and as you can tell we have a really thick connector and a thick connector so we're going to run this one that's thinner and we're going to do that from out in and then hopefully if we can do that we can install the antenna and then we can have iridium so we can have weather while we do the crossing it's going to be awesome and we can send message to family and friends and we can also call family and friends. Oh, this that would be great. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan as usual, you've seen that before, Robert is gonna go inside the locker, I'm gonna go through the outside locker and I'm gonna try to pass her the wire. Yay! We did it! Let's see how much we have here, right? Good. I think that's enough, right? Great! We still have a few bulkheads to go through, <laughs> but we're gonna find a way. And then we go through. So the idea is to have the antenna installed here. Now you're gonna leave this until it dries so it's better because you know we might leave some little black things inside and outside mm -hmm. and we might get dirt and things get messy really easy and once this dries we're gonna do the final installation of the antenna taking it out again yeah one little tip if you one day install this is try to install the antenna to the support first and then the support in place because as soon as you connect the antenna here this need to turn around and in order to do that you're gonna twist the cable and that's not gonna be possible so I think it's better to have the wire through the support, install the antenna, and then you twist around, and then you put in place, it's gonna be much, much easier. Okay. Supposedly. So mm. I'm gonna take this out, and I'm gonna do it properly, this time, living and learning.
the antenna is in place. Now we just need to finish running the wire. Now begins the fun part, how to pass all this wire through the bulkheads. So we managed to come all the way from there to here. <laughs> but here is the worst one. These less bulkheads, just one less plywood. There's so many wire. Yep, yep, yep. I did it. <laughs> and we're gonna try to create a, a coil of this line inside the nav table on the bottom and then we bring back so we have less wires on the back of the panel. Let's hope for the best. We're gonna put a support and the iridium go is gonna be installed right here. The first idea was to use an iPad here, but as we never used in a year, we are going to try to use this space for another thing. <laughs> yeah, actually there is one more pen that's going to come next week. Should we Maybe wait? we should wait and we finish this installation next week. Project on hold! No, this project is on hold, but it's really, really well. You're going to see. It's going to be awesome now. Awesome. I think I'm going to go for a swim. <laughs> I think you should. <laughs>